So, you can ask me questions, or did you? I have a sheet of questions, but I think they're probably the same questions that you How have. How did you come to live in Abidix? How do we come to live in Abidix? Well, um, we were a family of clergymen, and um, uh, they, they, they were clergymen and became bishops in the west of Ireland, and then they bought land in this area, um, and they acquired land uh, through marrying a, a daughter of a man called Denny Muschamp, who owned a lot of land in this area. So the first um, connection to the town, I think, was um, one of my ancestors who was a bishop who bought some land in Port Leash, and then his son married somebody called Mary Muschamp, whose father owned a lot of land around here. And she inherited that land, so that's, that's how we came to be here. What was it like growing up and living on the estate, and do you have any funny memories? It was wonderful. I was very, very lucky um, because um, there were all this beautiful countryside and um, all the people around and um, I got lots of funny memories. Um, one I remember um, uh, my, I, when I was, I think I was about five or something like this, four or five, and my mother had bought me a pair of pyjamas and she was very pleased. She'd been to Dublin and she bought a really expensive pair of pyjamas and the parish priest of Abbey Leaks was Father Lola. And for some reason, he'd given me, a five-year-old boy, a manicure set. I don't know why. And they had scissors with a curve for cutting your nails. And I thought I could combine these two presents um, by trying out the scissors on the pyjamas. So I got the scissors and I picked up the pyjamas and I said, I went snip and I cut a little hole and I was absolutely fascinated. It made a diamond shape. So I thought this was great. So I had whole pyjamas, brand new pyjamas, very expensive ones, all these holes in them. And then the next night, my mother was giving me a bath and she said, now you're dry, go and get your pyjamas. I said, I don't think I'll wear pyjamas tonight. And she said, go and get them. So there was no way out and I had to get the pyjamas and I held them up. And it was the only time she put me over her knee and beat me with a hairbrush. She was so cross about it. And I thought this was a terrible injustice that I'd be beaten like this. So, about an hour after I'd been sent to bed, somebody who lived at our back door saw me on my tricycle, heading off long after I was meant to be in bed. And they said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm not going to be treated like this. I'm going to Dublin. <laughs> and she said, well, you better have a cup of tea before you go. This is a long old trip. And I said, well, right, okay. Just one, mind you, I have to be getting on. It was, it was a summer's evening and um, she informed the authorities, my parents, and they came out to get me. So that was one of my stories. So I never got very far on my tricycle. Who worked on the staple house and are those jobs still in use today? Well, there was, um, one of the great things about Abbey Leaks was the employment that the estate offered. And Whereas nowadays people running businesses try to not employ more people than they have to because the business has to make money. Back in, the, in those days, the, the family saw the duty of the estate being to employ as many people as possible. So there was a huge amount of people. And even when I was a very small child, there were over 100 people working there. The sawmill provided a, a lot of employment, including for, for Jimmy Harford. Um, so most of them were working in the sawmill and the forestry provided a huge amount of employment and the farm as well and there were nine gardeners back in those days. So a lot of those jobs don't exist. There were a lot of people, there was, I can remember th uh, four people living in the house and working inside the house as well. A lot of those jobs don't exist anymore. The sawmill's gone and there are employment opportunities for the people of that peaks now. Back in the day, unless you were lucky enough to own a farm, um, there weren't many opportunities. So the estate felt it had a duty to offer opportunities for employment. So um, uh, that, and a lot of those jobs don't exist anymore. Of course, there are jobs still on the farm, and um, there are jobs in the woods, and I think the new owners will probably be employing more people, which is good news. So there are some of those old jobs are still there. 
nearly. Nearly. It's not the oldest, but it's one of the very early ones. Um, there are some others. Um, Derry, actually, in the north, is an example. And um, Bandon, down in, in at the other extreme, down in the, in, in the, in the county Cork, um, is another slightly earlier planned town. And Port Arlington, you probably know Port Arlington. That's a planned town, more or less the same, same time, possibly a little bit earlier, but it is one of the earliest and one of the, one of the best and best preserved ones. What do you know about the Abbey that was in Abelix? Well, I wish I knew more. I, and it's such a mystery because um, I do know that it was, a, it was from the order of Cistercians and that was an order of monks that originated from St. Bernard in France and they came to Ireland and the first abbey that the Cistercians set up in Ireland was at Mellifont, just north of Dublin. And then after that did well, some of the monks from Mellifont were sent out to start what they called daughter abbeys. They would they'd take some of the monks and start a new abbey in a different area. And one, of, one of them was Bolting Glass. And there are other Cistercian abbeys that then was like the next generation, whereas some of the monks from Bolting Glass came to Abbey to start another one. So it was a bit like a family tree with parents and children and grandchildren. And the frustrating thing about Abbey Leaks is that there's so little remains. In fact, there's no remains at all. And it's, that's so odd because if you go to Mellifant, you can see some remains. It's well worth going if you're ever driving from Dublin up to Belfast. Just swing off the road. It's not far off the main road and it's so worth a trip, particularly if you're interested in the Abbey of Abbey Leaks. And there's other Cistercian abbeys around Ireland, like Drear Point and County Kilkenny, where you can see a lot, and a lot of stone carving, and you can see the cloisters, and um, lots of carvings of saints and things in the stone. So why is it that there's nothing left from Abbey Leaks? And I don't know the answer to that question. So it's, it's, it's really frustrating. Um, I don't think my family are to blame in any way, because after the dissolution of the of the abbeys in Ireland which was um, sort of late 1930s the 1530s around 1540 um, there was quite a there was a, a big gap before my family came to Abelix and I think that during that period the stones were taken to build other, other things so it's really frustrating but in the kitchen garden which is the wall garden near Abelix house um, when I was a child, some skeletons were dug up, which were obviously burial grounds for the monks. Um, and unfortunately, nobody recorded exactly where they were dug up, but the remains were buried respectfully in the old churchyard graveyard. And maybe the new owners um, might actually try to find out more, because there's new technology now where without digging everything up, you can do a sort of x-ray of the ground and it might help pick up where foundations might lie from earlier structures. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that with the new owners we might actually suddenly get a lot more information because it's just so puzzling that where did all this stone go and why is there nothing left? Um, so it's a real mystery but I'm really hoping now that we might find out more in the, in the era of the new owners.